Can I get somebody here right away on the double? Yeah, uh, Cookie. Names. Thanks. Okay, okay. All right, we're doing the solo thing. I need a name here. Really clean. Really clean. Gotcha. 30 seconds. Oh, what, are you having an appointment later or something? Well, I wouldn't want to keep you. Somebody here is in a big rush, so let's start the game. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Pornography and ornithology. And we are talking 1,000 bucks for this question. Okay, get yourself set. It's time. Which of the following is not a bird? Bald-headed hermit, bush tit, cockatiel. The bald-headed hermit is not a bird. So like the pigeon, they're often found sitting on the stoop in front of my building. Okay, pick a category. Whoop de do. It's question number two. The name in this category is Old Peanuts. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. The uh, comic strip Peanuts debuted October 2nd, 1950. Now, if the Peanuts gang had aged as they should have, and Charlie Brown learned that his beloved little red-headed girl now had osteomalacia, what should he call her? The little, the little soft bone girl. <laughs> How about it? Hit me with the category. Ooh it's question number three. This one's gonna be... Speak up, I think you're dead. And we will pay out $3,000 for this one. Henry David Thoreau, prolific author and creator of the wilderness classic Walden, was unfortunately not so prolific on his deathbed. What were Thoreau's last words? Trees everywhere, moose, Indian, by now, or mom, make me a... Moose, Indian. <laughs> God, don't you wonder what the hell he was thinking? Okay. You're my question for forevermore. I love you. My question for. Here's the category. It's a nice place to visit, but you get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. Which of the following is not an actual place in the United States? French Lick, Indiana, Big Bone Lick State Park, Big Beaver P Trout Lick. Hey, Trout Lick is illegal in these parks. Alright, come on, hit me. Ain't no job, it's question five. The category, Peanuts and Our Darkest Fears. The amount on the table is three grand. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. Which Peanuts character might you try to avoid if you had Bromadrosophobia? Lucy, Woodstock, Pigpen, or Snoopy? The nose always knows. Bromadrosophobia is a fear of bad smells. Okay, pick... Uh-oh, West Truck licks nine more. It's time for a... This gibberish questions category is Baby Monkeys and Corporal Punishment. The opening value is $5,000. Okay, now remember, you don't have all the time in the world here. The less time you take, the more money you make. All right, ready? Now don't let the punctuation fool you. With what cliche does this rhyme? A pup soar, whip trout. Number one, no one will say this if you're good. No one will say it if you're good or if you're physically fit. What's the matter? A little out of shape, are we? It's often said to soldiers. Okay, let's see if you know it. See, I know that phrase because my dad's a sailor, and there's another saying he used to teach us when us kids would be messing around the deck during lunch. Hey, you knock it off! I'll beat the ship out of you! How about it? Hit me with a category. Zabba dooba dabbin, question seven. The category behind this question is He shoots, he scores. This question's gonna be worth $2,001 bills. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. 
If the mascots for these products were playing a pickup game of b-ball, which one couldn't slap the other player's five afterwards? Hamburger Helper, Chef Boyardee, Mr. Clean, or Rice Krispie? <laughs> hamburger Helper. The Hamburger Helper hand only has four fingers. Next up, comic books and the corporate world. And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. Get ready to buzz, because here it comes. If there were a series of comic books starring the Javelin, the Gremlin, the Hornet, and the Pacer, what might you assume the name of the publisher? AMC, American Motor. Sadly enough, each of these heroes has been defeated by no longer manufactured man. The category is The Muppet Show and Legendary Figures. Okay, shouldn't be too tough. This question's gonna be worth a grand. The Clutch Cargo cartoon characters had real mouths. The Swedish chef from The Muppet Show had real hands. Who of the following was not a real person? Sir Lancelot, St. Black Prince. I hate that. That's what I keep getting back from the Photoshop. Hell! <laughs> you know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. Sir Lancelot, fictional character, although I, I hear he used his lance a lot with Guinevere. Okay. Yo, have you been with nasty number 10? All right, let's see what we're doing here. Don't kick me there. And this one's going to be worth $1,000. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Which of the following pairs is not a match of a cartoon character and his sidekick? Boris Badenoff and Natasha No Good Nick, Secret Squirrel, Mariah. They ain't partners and they ain't friends. Yeah, I think the relationship ended in an argument over who had the more annoying voice. We've got ten questions down and for ten more we're going on to round two. <laughs> now we are one round away from the jack attack and all the questions in this round are going to be worth more than a round one. So pay attention and let's do The name of this category is Extra Crispy. It's going to be worth $4,000. Your neighbors, who happen to be cannibals, invite you over for dinner. Everyone's gathered around the big bucket of Kentucky Fried Human when Uncle Bob grabs a drumstick. Which bone is not on his plate when he's finished eating? Beamer. All night. That would be in our wing. Okay. Uh-oh, mess butt tit slime chore. Once again, it's time for a Snickerclish restaurant. All right, now here's your category for this gibberish question. High art in a blue collar. We're in round two, so this gibberish question is going to start off at $10,000. Okay, now remember, the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. Okay, let's see if you can untangle this one. Get yourself ready. What does this rhyme with? Spit paint rover, swill to splat shady flings. It's often quoted at sporting events. Let's see what you got, sir. Now, uh, look at here, boys. It's the top of the ninth, and we're down by ten, but Spit Paint Rover swill the splat shady flings. <laughs> I guess it's over. <laughs> All right, good. Black cat, heart attack, do you nightmare when you dream? Are you feeling lucky? It's number 13. Here's the category. Fairy tales and faking it. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. In a scandal that rocks the forest, the three bears allege that Goldilocks' hair is really made of fool's gold. They say that a better name for Goldilocks would be what? Obsidian Lock. P Hello, little pyrite lock. Pyrite is a brass-colored mineral that's often mistaken for gold. Okay, pick a category. This one's going to be Megillah Gorilla and the Auto Industry. And this one shouldn't be too tough. 4K for this one. 
Okay, listen carefully. Magilla Gorilla lived in a pet store owned by Mr. Peebles. Thomas Jefferson was the man of the people. The European version of a credit union is called a people's bank. Which of these names means the people's car? Testarossa, Subaru, Porsche, or Volkswagen? Now the correct answer is... The Volkswagen. How about it? Hit me with the cat. The category behind this question is pre-juvenile delinquents. I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. All right. Oh my God, who wrote this one? If your unborn, <laughs> if your unborn child wants to climb out of the womb and steal a VCR without leaving fingerprints, you better do it. Early in the first trimester, by the middle of the second trimester, any time before her eighth. No, but y you think the fetus wants that VCR so she can have a womb with a view? <laughs> Too bad you didn't pick this. Fingerprints develop at three months on a fetus. Now here's what I want to know. I want to know how that kid's going to get that VCR back into the womb. All right, come on. Flush your head down the latrine. Ease your way with sour cream. 16. Next up, something's caught in my throat. A right answer will get you two Gs for this question. Okay, here's a little tip you can use. It's said that the surest way to tell that a woman is actually a transvestite is to look at the hands and the Adam's apple. Which of the following statements is true about the Adam's apple? It's named after Adam from the Bible. If you cut one open, you'll find seeds. It produces an enzyme called... Women don't have an Adam's apple. Common misconception, my friend, but you choked down this one. In case you're curious about the correct answer, it's not... Named after old Adam. Legend has it that the forbidden food he ate got lodged in his throat, and apparently old Eve blew off that CPR course. The category is... Cartoon Cats and Sexual Orientation. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Sylvester and Tweety are working in a mash unit together in Korea in the 1950s. One day, Sylvester confides to Tweety that he's homosexual. Later that day, Sylvester learns that a little bird told his secret to Colonel Yosemite Sam. As this is the 1950s, what will probably happen to Sylvester? He'll be, give he'll be given a dishonorable discharge. Which may not be fair, but it's better than a burning discharge, let me tell you. Alright, come on, hit me with The category, may the force be with you. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Okay, now imagine that a movie theater advertises that they're showing one of the best movies in the Star Wars series. But when you get there, they tell you they couldn't get Empire Strikes Back, but they do have the less popular Ewoks, the battle for Endor. Bait and switch. I think that's also the process Princess Leia used to get her hair like that. He's me. Oh, he's me. Oh, it's the 19. All right, let's see what we're doing here. She married my uncle in Vegas. And if you can figure this one out, I can pay you 4,000 bucks. Hang on tight, because here we go. Which of the following is not an antelope? Addicts often pinch your oh. And here's the right answer. Oh. Often pinch your It's a dog. Come on, hit me. We need. Wow, honey! Hey. It's question number 20! <laughs> the name in this category is Warner Brothers and Military Combat. This question's gonna be worth $2,001 bills. All right, listen carefully. Wiley Coyote is a U.S. soldier fighting overseas in World War II. The Roadrunner is fighting for the Nazis and pushes an anvil on the coyote's head from a high cliff. Now, after Army doctors pull the coyote's head out of his torso, the coyote makes a full recovery. What can he expect to receive upon a decoration awarded to members of the armed forces wounded in action against the enemy? Okay. Time up. You already know what you're doing. We'll make sure your match fits this clue. 
surnames and famous women. Remember to keep that. glue handy you'll need it see you on the other side Alright, nice going. Game. I think you found your niche. Not the worthless trivia is gonna help you find a decent job or anything, but who knows? But I'll tell you what I do know. You don't know Jack. Okay, great show, everybody. Um, Cookie, what's the plan here with the contestants? Buzz, is it me? Is that what it is? I, I can't hear you. Yeah, turn up the game. Try it again. You have to do it. Hello, welcome to the show. Would you mind telling me how many contestants... Oh, poor you. You don't have any friends today. Oh, well. Okay, that's what I needed to know. 30 seconds. Okay, fine. Let's get going. Come on. Let's have some fun. Here comes Buzz. This one's gonna be the big stars come out at night. Two thousand bucks for right answer. Okay, get ready to fill in the blank. From the U.S., Tom Hanks looks like the biggest star. From Germany, David Hasselhoff looks like the biggest star. But what's the biggest star in our galaxy? Okay, let your fingers. I was like, I'm totally great. Cool. <laughs> yes, it's the sun. Duh. Take your pick. What do you say? Here comes question two. It'll make you feel brand new. Category. Iconoclastic toys. And 1,000 bucks is riding on this question. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. Suppose a leading toy manufacturer decides to cash in on the Sunday schooler market. Well, according to the story, Moses was sent adrift in a bulrush basket by his mother and was found by Egyptian princesses. <laughs> the Baby Moses Dolls. Don't have it sold separately. Put on your pants for the naked dance. And this question's category is Kiss with More Tongue. This one's going to be $3,000. Remember that guy from the rock band Kiss with the very long tongue? If rock star Gene Simmons wanted to form a new group named for an insect also noted for its relatively long tongue, which insect? Bumblebee tongues rule. <laughs> Their shows are also a great place to cop a good buzz. And we call this one, Sit Down, George. You're rocking the boat. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. George Washington is to the Delaware River as the Beatles is to Abbey Road. As George Washington was captured on canvas crossing the Delaware, so the Fab Four were captured on film crossing Abbey Road. <laughs> The lads had nicer weather, though, and uh, no funny hats. Okay. Number five. 
Category, let's do it. All fish go to heaven. Two G's for a right answer. Hang on tight, because here we go. Because it's not the name of an actual fish, which of the following would you not meet in the fish? There is no godfish. <laughs> Didn't Sartre say that on one of his frequent fishing trips? Take your pick. Oh, this is really big. This thing is huge. This category is Wake the Kids. 2,000 bucks riding on this one. Okay, time for a picture question the whole family can enjoy. Look carefully and tell me. Which fictitious combination of a grown-up movie and a children's book does this picture best represent? The Pod Piper of Hamlet. Stuart Little is a book about a little mouse boy, and Little Shop of Horrors is a movie about a killer plant. <laughs> Together, they bring the pest control industry to its knees. Go ahead and pick one. The 7 o'clock news with question 7. The category. Just give me the damn eggs and go away. This might be a hard one. Three grand. Okay, take a shot at this. Okay, I'll eat them, Sam. I am. Yes, I'll eat your eggs and ham. I'll eat them all down to the dregs, but only if they're Robin's eggs. What type of eggs are you gonna eat? Robin's lay blue egg. <laughs> Ah, you know that Sam I am really needs to get a life. Come on, we need a category. Order me the taco plate with a side of question eight. All right, next up, ancient gods and bean dip. Get this right, get two thousand dollars. All right, here we go. If the mythological gods of Greece and Rome were at a mixer, who is the only Greek god who might run into his Roman counterpart wearing the exact same name tag? Dionysius, god of wine. Both the Roman and Greek versions were named Apollo. And, ooh, how embarrassing. They both showed up in the same toga. Okay, pick a... Uh-oh, press what's with mime door. It's time for a... And this gibberish questions category is... Work with your hands. We're gonna start out with $5,000 here. Remember, speed's the key. The quicker you solve this, the more money you take away. Okay, please tell me, with what phrase does this rhyme? Drill kit, buzz, the naughty wood. And uh, don't get all knotted up by the punctuation. In number one, it's an advertising slogan. It's a slogan for a type of drink. Oh, I could use a drink right about now. Last clue, the drink comes from a... Take it away! Yeah, milk does a body good. That's why I bathe in it. Yeah, baby. How about it? We need a category. And this category is... It's all just a front. And this one's gonna be worth $1,001 bills. Okay, pay attention. Here's a word I often hear mispronounced. Now, I'm not gonna say it. I'm just gonna spell it. The word is F-A-C-A-D-E. Which of these sportscasters' last names rhymes with the correct pronunciation of F-A-C? The word is facade, which rhymes with Rashad and Ahmad. His name also rhymes with wad and cattle prod. Coincidence? Halfway there, ten more questions. Come in. The category is cooking with Christo. Four thousand bucks behind this one. All right, fingers limber, cause here comes the question. You're having performance artist Christo over for dinner, and you wind up with leftovers based on. Christo is famous for wrapping bridges, buildings, and even islands in plastic. Hey, leftovers, fine. Just uh, keep them away from the cat. OK, 
Okay, picking. Twelve. The category is Immortals Do It for Eternity. We got four grand on the table. Hey, look, you're back in high school health class, and your substitute teacher is Greek goddess Athena. Imagine a girl asks Athena for advice about sex based on her personal experience. What will Athena answer? Athena chose to remain a virgin goddess because she didn't want to be tied down. But she was very fond of a certain olive branch. Alright, go ahead and take the elevator. Okay, coming up this category is religious spectacles. This one's worth $4,001 bills. Okay, put your thinking caps on. When you know the answer, buzz in and type in one word that'll satisfy both blanks. Got it? Good. Here we go. Imagine you're watching a Sunday school play. If the actor playing the son of Noah were over... Go for it. Type hey, how's that burn feel? In case you're interested, here's the right answer. The, the actor playing Noah's son, Ham, is a ham. So, uh, if he were playing Noah's son as a young boy, could you say he was playing Hamlet? Come on, we need a... We wish you a number 14 and a happy Hanukkah. Category, let's do it. Great minds and small minds. We are talking four big ones. Check this out. If you want to remember the proper chronological order of the lives of Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates, what childish mnemonic could you use? Penis, stand aside, sores are pus filled, sperm production arrested, or anus stays par- No, nice try, really. Too bad you didn't choose this. Sperm production arrested. Socrates taught Plato, who taught Aristotle. Then they were all dead and their sperm production was presumably arrested. <laughs> this category is bad vacations throughout history. Looks like a toughie, six grand. Okay, ready. Pretend you live in Europe in the year 1582 and you're looking to take some time off of work. If you can only take your vacation on these dates in 1582, which would be the shortest vacation? In 1582, the Pope introduced a new calendar, so the day after October 4th was October 15th. Oh, and this year you promised the kids you'd take them to a witch burning, too. Okay, pick it. King 16! Category, games people shouldn't play. And this one's worth $2,000. Okay, peel your eyes, free your mind, cause here we go. To get from Baltic Avenue to Mediterranean Avenue in Monopoly, you pass Community Chess. To get from the Baltic Sea to the Mediterranean Sea in the real world, you do what? Travel through Northern Africa. You'll be traveling through Eastern Europe. <laughs> Which, in Monopoly terms, makes Eastern Europe the crappiest property to own. Take your pick. What do you say? Excellent choice. It's time to play Dis or Dad. Category for this Dis or Dad question is... Tony Deaf. All right, I'm going to read off seven names. Oh, all right, you already know how to play. Well, let's put 30 seconds on the clock then. Let's dance. Tony Braxton, dance a character. Tony Banta. Tony Bennett. Tony Maselli. Tony Basil. Tony Childs. Last one. Tony, Tony. What can I say? I got nothing to criticize here. Seven out of seven. Yeah. Just another day at the office. All right, let's move on. All right, go ahead and pick one. And 
in this questions category is hello sailor pop a right answer you got 4k okay i'm about to test your patriotism hit your buzzer when you're ready to fill in the blank you're one of the few the proud the marines therefore you should get used to traveling from those halls in montezuma to the shores of what okay go Tripoli, it's where the Marines fought the Barbary Pirates in the early 1800s. Now, most people don't know there used to be a whole verse in the Marine hymn about being sure to drink only bottled water. Come on, we need... This one's gonna be, once you've had a big bopper, you'll never go back. And this one's worth $4,000. Get your fingers ready, here's one coming at ya. You're wearing Chantilly Lace in a cafe in Chantilly, France, listening to Chantilly Lace on the jukebox. To complete the moment, you ask, Le Coucherie, but monsieur, I hardly even know her. <laughs> Let me show you what someone smart would have picked. The waiter is gonna bring you some whipped cream. Unless you forgot to tip last time, in which case he'll bring you a bowl of whipped cream with a loogie at the bottom. The Fresh Saver. 20. And we call this one Instant Nostalgia. 4,000 bucks behind this one. Okay, buzz in and type in your answer when you know it. Ready? Let's see how well you've been paying attention. What was the answer to the last question? Go nuts! Type... You got it! Oh, I, I, I'm sorry. No. Let me refresh your memory. I asked you for the English translation of Chantilly, which is whipped cream. Yeah, I may be a jerk, but at least I'm a jerk who still has my short-term memory. Thank you. Jack, ah, you've been here before. Well, hope you're prepared this time. Here's your clue. Stop! You're killing me! Now let's see if you kill your score. Good luck! questions right, I'd still be telling you you stunk, but you wouldn't have to agree with me. And another thing.
Great job, everybody. Good show. Okay, let's roll the commercials and uh, contestants. Cookie, what's happening? Hey, listen, if you want to play. Doesn't shit. 60 seconds. Yeah. Senna was a slow talking idiot. What's hey problem? There, welcome to Jesus, the show. Mavis, How many is he right? Could we speed this up on the key? I love it when we have one. Be nice. Guns. 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 30 Guns. seconds. Guns. Well, looks like this category is the playground ain't big enough for the both of us. This one's worth a grand. You know, kids at school can be really horrible to other kids with problems. Why would the kid at school who suffers from gynecomastia be teased? He ejaculates prematurely. A condition in which a man grows breasts is called gynecomastia. And all his friends call him he booby. Okay, give it up for anything you can do, I can do Chaucer. $3,000 for this one. Heads up, here it comes. What highbrow collegiate subject would you learn about if you read the Summoner's Tale from Chaucer's Canterbury Tales in your English Lit 201 class? Chaucer's The Summoner's Tale involves a man who is so fed up with a friar trying to get money from him that he farts in the friar's hands. <laughs> But I wouldn't recommend this when your professor asks for your term paper. Category. Say hello to the Ingalls Get Shingles. How does two thousand dollars sound? Think fast. Imagine an episode of Little House on the Prairie in which the Ingalls hire an architect to design a new home. Due to his famous prairie-style homes, which architect should they hire? Daniel Burnham? Well, he sure burned you. <laughs> Bet you wish you'd pick this. <laughs> Frank Lloyd Wright's earliest and best-known style of architecture is his prairie style. The scene where Mary keeps turning around and hitting Frank Lloyd Wright with a wooden beam is a classic. I need a cat. Stop at three, no, you gotta have four, yeah! Open wide and get ready for... Go! Be gone! And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, listen up. I need you to let me know which radio personality might have placed this personal ad. Single white male from NPR in search of a prairie home. Garrison Keeler hosts a prairie home companion on NPR, which includes his news from Lake Wobegon. What is this, Prairie Style Homes, Prairie Home Companion? When did we go all Midwestern? Let's blow this time and head for number five. The category? What's the question again? And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. All right, this one's not too hard as long as you listen carefully. I've got a bit of a problem. Listen to this. I know it's a famous quote, but some doofus recorded it backwards. Here, I'll play it again. If we play this forward instead of backward, what will it say? All the world's a stage, out damn sp to be or not to be. Hey, that is the question. <laughs> and the answer. How ironic. All right. For your enjoyment, this old cave, $2,000 says you don't know this one. Okay, get your eyes focused and try to solve this analogy. Stalagmite is to stalactite as, oven is to refrigerator, floor light is to chandelier, ceiling fan is to air conditioner, or armoire is to dinette set. Ceiling fan is to air conditioner? Speaking of blowing air... Let's take a look at the right answer. Stalagmites are deposits on the floor of a cave. Stalactites hang from the cave ceiling. These were major problems for Martha Stewart in a previous life when her name was Thog. Category. Seven, lucky, lucky seven. 
shake hands with. Gee, I'm an actor. Get it right. I'm handing over 2K. All right, listen up. In the climactic <sighs> moments of an episode of Melrose Place, Jane, Jake, and Allison all rush out into the courtyard to resolve their love triangle once and for all. From her window, Joe notices that the members of the love triangle are forming an isosceles triangle. Which of these is true? The three angles of the triangle are the same. Jane and Allison are equidistant from Jake. Billy's in the pool. The girls are on the deck. Or Andrew Shue's acting will move you to tears. Oh, excuse me. See, now, I could have given you some cash if you pick this. An isosceles triangle is one with two equal sides and angles. Don't feel bad. No one on Melrose Place knows what an isosceles triangle is either. Okay. I got some good news for you. You're about to move into a dis or dat. And this dis or dat question's category is... What the hell is Dan Aykroyd doing there? Pay attention here, I'm gonna... Oh, I see, you've got this thing down. Well, I'll put 30 seconds on the clock then. Let's do it. Lionel Richie, Band-Aid USA... Bill Collins. Bob Geldof. Duran Duran. Dan Aykroyd. Cindy Lauper. One more, George Michael. That's all she wrote. Perfect. And with time to spare, here you go. There you go, next time you treat. Okay, let's get out of here. I need a category. Lenovi is number nine. Here we have, well, it's better than driving through the Midwest. This one can net you a grand. Put your tray in the upright position. It's time for takeoff. Let's say you're taking a family vacation through the body. You're driving along a nerve cell and you come to a synapse. What will happen if you keep going? You'll come to a rest area. A synapse is the gap between two nerve cells. Uh, Dad, I don't think we can go this way. Hey, one more peep out of you and we're going back to the large intestine. Okay. Okay, pick a category. Oh, you're so naughty. You just picked a three-way. Okay, listen up. This is pro. Okay, well, we're off. Category for this one is, you said it, I heard you say it. And that means this three-way is all about catchphrases from these three decades. The 60s, the 70s, or the 80s. Well, good luck. And don't worry, I'll still respect you when this is over. Oh, yes! Oh, yes! That's all. Now catch your breath while we see how you did. A little sloppy, but I still love you. Let's see what this earnest attempt did to your overall score. Well, it's time to get back to the game. But, uh, you will call me, right? Okay, either you finished round one, or you have another round to go. You know, depending on how you look at these things. Every question in round two is... Get it. Don't look now! The category is, what? Rock music will make me deaf? Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. Let's see how you handle this one. Suppose Ralph Nader could control what songs play on your car stereo. Considering the issues he advocates, what song would probably play the most often? Whoa, whoa! For the curious, here's the right answer. Ralph Nader works to keep American consumers safe, so he'd probably play safety dance on the car radio. Ralph doesn't want us to hang out the car windows, but he says we can dance if we want to.
May I introduce... We should have picked a longer war. This one can net you $6,000. You ready? Then complete this analogy. Mash is to aftermash as the War of 1812 is to what? The Battle of New Orleans, the Whiskey Rebellion, the... The Battle of New Orleans was fought right after the War of 1812 was resolved in a peace treaty. The two armies didn't know the war was over. <laughs> Aftermash was a sitcom where some second-string actors from the original series didn't realize their careers were over. Swing your partner one in three! A do si -do for the big third time! This category's known as There's Waldo. 4,000 big ones for a right answer here. Hope you brought your suit. It's time to get wet. Imagine Mr. Magoo decides to quit bugging everybody and actually get his eyes checked. If it turns out he needs eye surgery, what kind of eye care professional does he need? An optician, an optometrist, an ophthalmologist is the only one who can perform surgery. <laughs> but they can all yell, Look out! Well, what do we have here? Strictly Hysteria. 2,000 bucks for a correct answer. Just step up and take a swing at this one. If you wanted to perform the Tarantella in the way the dance was originally used, what would you need to do? Receive a spider bite, grind an organ while you're dancing, kill someone afterward? Grind your organ? <laughs> In case you're wondering, the Tarantella started as a hysterical dance that was supposed to overpower the poison of a tarantula bite. It's got a good beat and you can die to it. I need a category. 15th floor, lingerie, housewares, and useless trivia. Pucker up for God save the strange new government. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. Uh, let's see if you can wrap your head around this. If the British Parliament finally decided to dissolve the monarchy and replace it with a monarchy instead, to what would the British population swear allegiance? A Tasmanian aphrodite. Monarchy is what a woman's first menstruation is called. Either way, I suppose Britain's left with a bloody mess. All right, hit me. Uh-oh, blah, 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 blah. It's time for a conversation. Take a look at your gibberish category. The real ending of Citizen Kane. And 10,000 bucks right out of the gate for this one. All right, as soon as you know the answer, buzz in, because I'm taking away some cash every second and a half. Okay, tell me, with what popular expression does this gibberish phrase rhyme? Rosebud faux guitar. And uh, don't get thrown by that colon in there. First clue, it's a nice way of saying you're wrong. <laughs> Why would you do that? It's a nice way of saying you're wrong. All right, type in your answer. Uh. What kind of reward is a cigar anyway? Hey, good job. Go get yourself a little mouth cancer. Get On the big bayou in Louisiana, quest on 17. This one likes to go by the slaughter of 80s pop. Set up straight, this one's worth $6,000. A gaggle of geese, a school of fish, a flock of seagulls? Oh my god, a lawless pack of animals has slaughtered the 80s band a flock of seagulls. Detectives are rounding up animals with suspicious sounding group names. Because it's not a correct group name, which of these will not be a suspect in flock of seagulls murder? A gang of elks, a murder of crows, a Hey, Vinny, hop over Dundee's and tell him he don't pay me soon. He's living in a land six feet down under. The correct answer is... There's no such thing as a kill of bears. A group of bears is called a sleuth. Elementary, Watson. They just couldn't run so far away after all. Okay. And 
on this one is even the unstable like to date. Get a right answer, you're walking away with four grand. Okay, now which classic American lit character would most likely have submitted this personal ad? Teen single white male in search of single female. Tall smoker likes kids. Recovering from nervous breakdown, but aside from the catcher in the rye holding Caulfield. But holding no phonies? Man, what do you think the personals are all about? Okay, pick a category. Step right up for question 19. And I believe this one's called Innocent Victims of Childish Pranks. And it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. I love prank phone calls, don't you? Let's listen in. Hello, ye old stuff. Can I help you? Yeah, do you have Prince Albert in a can? Why, well, yes, we Prince Albert is a kind of tobacco. <laughs> and you better let him out or he might suffocate. <laughs> I need a category. Question number 20. Let's see what we got going. Really cool parents. Think you can handle $6,001 bills? Flex those fingers, because here it comes. Say you want to give your daughter a doll for her birthday. If you bought some dolls from the Valley of the Dolls store, with what gift would you surprise her? Um, the dolls in Valley of the Dolls are actually pills, like, you know, drugs. <laughs> There you go, honey. Happy birthday. Daddy, I can't get the cap off. Okay, I need a category. Edgy, aren't we? Relax and take a look at this clue. I'll tell you when to panic. What are you calling for? Well, operators are standing by. Jack attack like a finely tuned instrument. Take a look at your final score. That's the game. Wow, you were the best guest we had this whole game. Really? Now do me a favor. Take a quick look to your left, now your right, and repeat after me. You don't know Jack! Beautiful. Very nice work, people. Hey, Raul, what's up? Are we doing another one of these? person in your own Welcome aboard. I'm glad you could break away from your fishing lessons long enough to go down to our food floor. Maybe you'll be able to give sushi lessons when you're through. Now. How many contestants? One player? Great. I'll keep you company. Are you a first time rider? Ah yes, they always come back. Type your name. Okay, that's fine. Remember to be all you can be. These little elevator jobs always end too soon. Oh well, see you at the bottom. It's time for the 
show where high culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack, The Ride, is brought to you by E. coli Diet. Drink a shake and flush the slush. And now, here's the host, delicious as his name, Cookie. Hey there, welcome to the game. I hope you're hungry. Uh, I was going to have a fish fry, but now I think I'll just serve crow. <laughs> well, I hope you didn't fill up on bread, because there's plenty of food here. Eat! Eat! <laughs> the category is... Cut your food. Don't tear at it with your teeth. Hey, you remember all those crappy products advertised on TV that claim to even make julienne fries? Well, if you were to julienne... Ju Sweet. And now that I've julienned her, we'll fry Julia with some ground beef for a few minutes. Until I'm golden brown. Okay. This one's called... Need a quick and easy meal? Eat your young. Okay, prepare yourself. $3,417 is on the line here. And the question is... Anyway, if a headline reads... We love you, Mom. I love you, too. Another way to coddle someone is to cook them in water that's almost boiling. And if you want to coddle who you're coddling, you should boil them in Evian water. Get your buzzer to ch oh. oh, here's your category. Doc says I gotta eat this. You know, it's never a bad idea to get suggestions on your diet from a doctor. Say you're a maggot living... Doctors used to use maggots to eat away diseased tissue and help stop infection by bacteria. So eat up. But remember, diet's only half the picture. Make sure you exercise. You know, walk around the block a few times after eating diseased tissue. Now, are you sitting down? Well, of course you are. You're at a computer at any rate. Well, I for one am very excited. We have a dis or dat question. The category for this dis or dat is... They're just a couple of fruits. Okay, I'm gonna read off seven people or things, and for each one, I want you to tell me whether it's associated with apples or oranges. For each right answer, you get some cash. And you lose cash for a wrong answer or any you don't get to. Okay, you got 30 seconds to nail all seven. And here we go. William William I say seven out of seven I got nothing to criticize here all right there it is let's keep moving all right okay give it up for 2,000 year old leftovers get your buzzer finger ready here we go say you want to serve the actual body and blood of Jesus at According to the doctrine of transubstantiation, the bread and wine actually become the body and blood of Jesus during communion. It doesn't taste very fresh, though. Kind of like it's been hanging around somewhere for days. Coming up. French dining. It's all in the tongue. You ready? Let's go. Imagine that you want to cook a special meal for your loved in France, cabbage, or chou, is a term of endearment, like sweetheart. Look, honey, chou, chou. Hey, come back. Hey, buzz it. Here's your category. When biblical tummies rumble. Here we go. Say that while sailing around in a... Adam and Eve on a raft is diner speak for two eggs on toast. Two very naked and sinful eggs on toast. Okay, select the... Well, a good fart sound effect would be appropriate, but here's your category. Don't fight with your food. 
Hey, have you ever been to a bullfight? They kill the bull. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Did I ruin it for you? Suppose the bull or toro were replaced by a Japanese. In Japanese, toro means fatty tuna, and it's used in sushi. And after you take in the bullfight, make sure you stick around for the annual running of the puffer fish. Ah, you blew it. Here's your category. I'm so drunk, I'll eat anything. Okay, don't panic, but you've been invited to a party, and you've been asked to bring the guacamole dip. Okay, deep breath. Now listen up. Say that instead of using avocado in your guacamole, you use... More testicle? Sure. And another wiener, please. The ancient Aztecs named the bulbous avocado after their bulbous testicles. It's roadkill time. Buzz in when you see the item that correctly pairs up the two items on the screen. And that bonus question at the end could mean even more cash. All right, put it in gear. We're going. Constitution light and copy color. What's the common link between these two? Score. Punch to the back and painful stone. Spotted horse and exploding Ford car. Ozzy's Sabbath and Rush's C. Score. Army's Berets and Kato's Hornet. Shade of Blue and Military Branch. Skippy Bikini and Silly Blank. Score. All right, let's nab that bonus. What do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all pasta shapes? Types of cheese? of beans and I would know. That's what your current score looks like. Let's keep going. All right. Okie doke, let's check out the category. Licking the platter clean. Hey, you know that rhyme about Jack Spratt who could eat no fat? Well, which of these could Jack Spratt? Jack Spratt could eat no fat, but he could eat crudite, which are just Frenchy raw vegetables. And his wife would just eat the onion dip with her fingers. Now, so... Oh, that was sucky. I'm sorry about that. Here's your category. Eat and die. Okay, you know those crazy diets where you can only eat one type of food, like only grapefruit or only carbohydrates or only mammals that hop? Um, well, check this out. Breakfast, six ounces of paint, one bowl of chalk, and it... When you have the desire to eat stuff that isn't food, that's called pike up. And after you eat all that indigestible flavor, well, that's called extremely painful. Okay. For a clue? I bet you are. Here you go. We'll start with the pizza crust. And if I'm feeling naughty, we'll make our way to the sausage.
intense, very stiff competition. <laughs> So you think you know sous chef? You and your other yuppie spawn friends think you know sous chef? Well, you don't know sous chef at all, not a wee bloody bit. Oh, oh, you can sit in your fancy $70 a plate sushi cafes and impress your other human scabby friends and order California roll and think you're the sheep's wool. Well, you're nothing. You're sushi juniors and you make me sick. So from now on, you order sushi the real way, the proper way. You get McLeod sushi or you don't eat it at at all. McLeod's only uses real haggis. None of this simpy wimpy fish snot. We only use haggis. Good Scottish men's tagus. And if you know it's good. Welcome to the game. Alright, tell me, what's the plan? Network. Oh, super. How many people are playing? Alright, if you can just type in your name. Alright, that'll do it. So, my solitary companion, Dini. Nope? Okay, choose wisely. where high culture and pop culture collide. Well, hello there, and welcome to our In the Attic episode. We're going to take a stroll down memory lane, look at the old yearbooks, and face the fact that you haven't really amounted to much of anything. How you doing? Schmitty here. So glad you could make it. This was at the top of my to-do list. Now then, I hope you packed the lunch, because it's time to get started. Let's see if you can buzz in for a decent value on this one, huh? The total amount for this one is two grand. Let's see what we got going. The Silicon Valley has great cleavage. Get the wax out of your ears. It's question time. Because she had her silicone breast implants removed, whose children would most likely find their mommies? It would seem Pamela Anderson decided to downsize herself. This way, when Ms. Anderson lands that role in Bikini Biker Chicks 3, well, she'll have the satisfaction of knowing that, damn it, it was her talent that got her the job. Buzz in for your amount. The reward for this one is 4500 Well, what do we have here? All dressed up and no place to go trick-or-treating. Flex those fingers, here it comes. If instead of getting your costume from the attic, you get it from Attica, what will you probably be dressed in? Attica is a prison in New York. And the attic is that room on top of your house. Until you get that figured out, you may want to stay at home. Choose an amount. You got yourself one extra large value this time. 97.50. What in the... I can't read this. It's time for... All you gotta do is figure out the answer, buzz in and type it in. You move quickly, I'll give you more cash. The opening value for this one is... 97.50. Okay, put on your thinking, uh, thing, and see if you can unscramble this phrase. Cute jive eel. Look closely, it's an 80s ghost flick. 
Michael Keaton starred as the title character. Come on, start typing and hit return. The best thing about Michael Keaton's performance as Beetlejuice is that it almost makes you forget about that whole Johnny Dangerously thing. Almost. Time to pick a value. Here's what we got. Two grand. Well, look what I found. Snug as a bug in a bearskin rug. Hope you're hungry. It's question time. If you want to cover as much floor as possible, which of the following bearskin rugs should you bring down from the attic? The Cody... Lame. Okay, here's my bear voice. <clears throat> the Kodiak brown bear is the largest living carnivore. Roar! Yep, nothing impresses the ladies like a dead bear on the floor. Except for cats. I understand they have a thing about dead cats. Pick a value. Let's see what this one's worth to you. 750 bucks. This category is known as, haven't I seen you somewhere before? Oh, man, you are going to love this. I went up to my attic to see if I could, you know, find something cool for the show and check it out. It's a vaudeville album from the comedy team of Old Man and Snappy Slim. Oh, listen real close to this classic. Hey, Slim, I hear you started a baseball team. Sure did. Wow, who's on first? That would be Skeeter Johnson. And who's on second? Uh, Slappy McGee. Hey, I thought he was on first. No, no, no. I already told you. That's Skeeter Johnson. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess you did. Okay, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I'll tell you, brilliant stuff right there. So, who's on first? Slim, Skeeter, Slap... Boy, they sure don't make comedy routines like they used to, huh? That's Skeeter Johnson on first. And you heard the proof. Ah, those whippersnapper hooligans Abbott and Hardy stole all our material. Man, we could have been so famous. We could have sold out Caesar's salad. And we would have knocked Lewis and Clark all the way back to... Pittsburgh and <laughs> Go ahead and choose a value. This one comes in at four thousand dollars. Up next, hung like a horse fly. All right, let's do it. Considering the scientific family that moths belong to, what might a moth scream when he accidentally gets kicked in his moth balls? Easy with the dragonfly jewel. The wondrous butterfly and the annoying moth are cut from the same cloth. Come on, guys. Next stop, the lamppost. No, my f***ing balls. Ticket him out. Let's see how much you can win this time. 3250. Open wide and get ready for actors who lap milk out of bowls. See if you can wrap your skull around this. If Andrew Lloyd Webber hires the cast of cats to get rid of the mice in his attic, what song will most likely be heard amongst the sounds of dying rodents? Mr. Mistopheles. Don't cry for me. The music of the night. No, that'd be if you hired the cast of Phantom of the Opera to get rid of his mice. And believe me, they're way overpriced. I could have given you some cash if you picked this one. Personally, I think it's easier just to hire an exterminator. I mean, sure, he may not be singing, but if you're lucky, he may be wearing a leotard. Time to choose a value. I think that value might come in handy. Prepare yourself for the steely gaze of a dis- This dissertat category name is I Will Not Eat Green Eggs in Manson. All right, I'm going to read off seven titles, okay? And for each one, I need you to... All right, Charles in charge. You think you know the rules? I'm just going to put 30 seconds on the clock. Let the games begin. I want to disappear, kids. Hey world, here I am. 
ABC Island. Let your ego die. Devil in my lunchbox. Bouncy, big, and furry. Last one. How I became a fool. That'll make seven. Five right. Solid mediocrity. Let's throw that cash out of your total. Wow, that was really exciting. Grab a value. The total for this question is $4,000. The category is... I know nothing. Ready? Good. We're starting. Which of these war medals would Colonel Hogan from Hogan's Heroes most likely have hidden away in his attic? The Vietnam Medal. Of course, Hogan's Heroes takes place during World War II. I'll tell you, a sitcom about the most devastating war in human history. <laughs> Genius! Oh, man. <laughs> Death. <laughs> Go ahead and pick an amount. Let's make this one worth $3,000. Let's take a look at He Loved Me, He Loves Me Not. Okay, so listen carefully, because you're going to have to do some typing later. Anyway, I'm at this auction, right? And, um, anyway, to make a long story short, I ended up purchasing a box of things called souvenirs from ex-husbands. <laughs> and get this, the auction people didn't even know who the hell it belonged to, so I got it for like a buck and a quarter. <laughs> Let's see what I want. Oh, this is good. There's a copy of Arthur... Come on, take it! You, my freakish friend, are absolutely correct. Marilyn Monroe was married to playwright Arthur Miller, Yankees player Jolton Joe DiMaggio, and some cop. And one day, they all ran into each other in a coffee shop, and oh boy, she had some explaining to do then. Buzz in for the value. The value for this one is $4,000. May I introduce, voted most likely to suck seeds. You know, I, I have to admit, I, I'm a little confused. All these years, I thought I was voted best dressed in high school. Well, I just found my high school yearbook, and it turns out, well, maybe you can help me out. If I was voted best dressage in high school, at what did I excel? Writing poems, playing piano, arranging... Very funny. I never rode a horse in my life. How the hell did they get that picture of me and my pink eyes out on top of a horse? <laughs> and all this time I thought they called me Pony because of something they saw in the locker room. Value time. The reward for this question is... 1250. Here's a little something I call a very Brady border conflict. Okay, let's see if you can complete this analogy. Greg and Marsha Brady are a groovy attic bedroom as Peru and Ecuador are too. A cocaine plantation, the Galapagos Islands, the Amazon. Since way back in 1941, Peru and Ecuador have gone to battle over the rights to the land area containing the Amazon headwaters. The entire conflict began when Peru threw a football at Ecuador's nose. Choose a value. Here's what you can win on this one. 47.50. I'm calling this one. Make those dolls stop looking at me. So you know how in the movies, attics are always filled with, you know, normal things, like music boxes with the music playing and dolls with smiles on their faces, and yet somehow it's all really freaking creepy? Well, if a movie were made based on poet Maya Angelou's autobiography, what creepy but not really creepy? My close personal friend Maya Angelou's autobiography is called, I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. Yes, and I keep my adorable little bird right over here. Hey, oh my god, Petweety! Get away from, get down from there! Damn cast of cats! Grab that value.
Here's the price tag. $4,500. Your category's going to be, with this ring, I do rebound. All right, tuck it in. We're moving. Say Dennis Rodman's grandchildren discover his wedding dress and jewelry in their attic and want to play Grandma Pa Rodman. What jewelry would they be able to wear with the dress? Well, close, but Dennis won only three championships in Chicago. But he was made for Chicago. The city of broad shoulders, hog butcher to the world, home of big men in high heels and feather boas. Well, that'll make an exciting story, won't it? Early in his career, my close personal friend Dennis Rodman won two championships in Detroit. At forward, six foot seven, wearing a Vera Wang original off the shoulder with an elaborately patterned tray, Dennis Rodman! Take a value. All right then, grab hold of something. Welcome to the Jack Attack. You should already know how this works, so let's get right to it. Here's your clue. What's packed away? That was an intense game. That was really thrilling. You were by far the best player we had. Now do me a favor. Look to your left. Now look to your right. And repeat after me. You don't know Jack! set sail. Remember, bring home the loot just like you did on your last voyage. May freedom be riding on your answers. Make me proud. today, huh? Well, don't worry. I'm gonna harass you so much, it'll be like having an annoying little sidekick right there next to you. Now then, I hope you packed the lunch, because it's time to get started. Time to select a category. We call this one, One Small Slow Step for Stoners. Looks like this one's going for 2,000 bucks. Hey, you know how Woodstock occurred just a few weeks after the moon landing back in 69? Well, there's some hippie who claims to have seen an actual moon rock at Woodstock. What's he talking about? The bass player for Jimi Hendrix, the lead singer for Jeff... Real slick. 
Grace. <laughs> well, let's see. Either you're way too young or way too dorky. Rocker Keith Moon was the drummer for The Who. Oh, but those weren't moon rocks. Now, that was just the rubble that used to be a hotel room. How about picking a category? Here we have growing really, really old together. And you pocket 4,000 bucks if you get this one right. Here's the question. Based on current life expectancies, who would you expect to live happily ever after the longest? An Argentinian Beauty and the Beast, a Canadian Red Riding Hood and Woodcutter, a Japanese Cinderella and Prince Charming, or a Russian Snow... My close personal friends, the Japanese, have a life expectancy of about 80 or 81. <laughs> Although you gotta think that tooling around in a pumpkin driven by mice is gonna shave a couple of years off of that. Time to make a choice. This one's called Basketball Teams That Need More Short White Guys. This one can net you four grand. Now, you know as well as I do that the Harlem Globetrotters have had a lot of folks join them over the years, but when you look down their roster, <laughs> there's some real clunkers in there. Who of the following is not an honorary Harlem Globetrotter? Pope John Paul II, Henry Kissinger, Bob Hope. Uh-uh, the Pope is an honorary trotter. He's listed at 6'10", but that's just because of the hat. And the platform sneakers. <coughs> so you don't lose any sleep over it. As we go to press, Billy Crystal is not an honorary globetrotter. I guess Billy's sense of comedic timing just hasn't matured to the point where he can handle the bucket of confetti properly. So, what's it gonna be? Let's have a big warm welcome for the first CK1 is free. 4,000 bucks if you get this. Okay, could somebody explain women's perfume to me? They all have these outrageous names, each one trying to outdo the next. They're like little bottles of danger. Not Lauren's romance leads to Gucci's envy, leads to Calvin Klein's obsession, leads to Christian Dior's... Mace is a perfume? You're kidding me. I always thought it was like, you know, something dangerous that you... Let me, let me see that. Ow! Ow! My eyes! Oh, God! I can't see! <laughs> oh, no, that's nice. <coughs> Should have picked this one. Poison. It's a very popular designer fragrance. I understand the next hot new scent is going to be dead by the side of the road. Pick a category. Hey, bless smut with dime store. It's time for a... Let's see if you can make sense of this category. I am the smell of fear. Right out of the gate, this one's going to be worth 10 grand. Okay, as soon as you've figured out what this gibberish phrase rhymes with, buzz in, because I'll be taking away some cash every second and a half. Okay, tell me, with what famous person's name does this rhyme? Him a flea. Fear me. Oh, and don't get too hung up on the... Come on, start type. <laughs> Not bad for a player with eight tentacles and a giant turnip for a head. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> Time to choose a category. Here's a little something I call intercontinental breakfast, tang and tube steak. And you pocket 4,000 bucks if you get this one right. So maybe you've heard about this new international space station thing that's orbiting the Earth. Yeah, 16 countries are a part of it. But tell me this. If an international house of pancakes opens on the international space station, which of these items will probably not be on the breakfast? This menu. Colombian coffee, French toast, Canadian bacon. Colombia is not one of the 16 countries currently part of the International Space Station. They're too busy dealing with their powdered sugar cartels. So, what's it gonna be?
Welcome to the Jack Attack. Pay attention to the items. Well, you want to get right to it. Fine with me. Here's your clue. Where are you heading? And can you give me a lift? I'll just throw my amp in the back. Like I always say, it doesn't matter whether you win or lose as long as you get to play with yourself. Now get the hell away from the computer, will ya? Because 